I heard the claim recently that our democratic freedoms would not have been possible without Luther and the Reformation. Is that true? First, you have to define, well, she's right, but you have to define what those democratic freedoms are. Okay, let's do that. What are they? I mean, let's see, we can vote. Well, Luther was against voting, so that doesn't really count. When was the last time I myself voted for a presidential candidate I liked to one? That would have been Ronald Reagan. But you had the freedom to vote, you had the choice to vote. What does that mean? Rather than obey some monarch. But what does that mean? That means you have a say. No, I don't. I have no say at all. Nobody I agree with will ever be elected president. I thought you voted for Reagan. I did. But even he didn't do what he said he would. No. Wow, okay. So, I like him. I mean, he did some of what he said he would. But let's face it. Reagan was going to turn the clock back to 1940 or 20 or 30 or somewhere. And we're here in 2017. So, well, you're make, you seem to be making the argument that if, in order to exercise freedom, you have to vote for a president, for, for a candidate who becomes president. I'm saying that in order to exercise freedom as they imagine it to be, my vote has to mean that I have some influence on affairs. And at the national level, that's not true. I don't, I never have, and I never will. It's okay, I don't mind that. Because it's, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not the master of the house. My vote counts for a little more at the state level, considerably more at the county level. And here in my fabulous town, when I go to vote in a municipal election, one of the 23 or four out of the thousands who live here, um, then my vote means something. What I like to call the tyranny of the involved. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, it's, it's nonsense. The, uh, the fact of the matter is the leadership of the country are going to make their decisions without any reference to me or anything I think or believe or hope in. It's always been that case and it always will be. Okay. Well, but the ability to vote gives me the illusion that I count for something to them other than as a cash cow to be milked. And I don't. The, uh, the second uh, question then is, well, Let's look at the four freedoms, since we say democratic freedoms. I'm going to take FDR as four freedoms. Okay. So what were they? Your, fav your favorite president. <laughs> My favorite president, you bet. <laughs> FDR. Hey, I made four pilgrimages to Hyde Park. So, Impressive. Yeah. You know, I, first time I did that, I stood before, uh, I stood before the tombs of, El of Eleanor and Franklin. I called my brother and I said, I'm standing in front of Eleanor and Franklin's tombs. What should I do? And my brother says, I've got my cell phone. My brother says, well, you could disembowel yourself. That would be a statement. But anyway, I digress. So what were the four freedoms? Yeah. They were freedom from fear, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and freedom from want. Those are the four freedoms. Okay. So let's look at each of them, shall yeah. we? Yeah. Freedom of speech. Now, we've already touched on that. If I use the N-word or I deny the, the uh, reality of the Holocaust in Germany. Well, that's Germany. Well, this is America. All right, if I use the N-word, or the F-word, or any... No, that, I, I that's, don't not, mean, that's not illegal. I don't mean the biological... No, you, you, but I'll be punished. What do you, what do you want... Well, and then call the cops. I, oh, no, then what are they going to do? <laughs> no, you remember that comedian who used the N-word? Uh, 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 Kramer. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, he was uh, pulled limb from limb. What would his calling the cops have done? Yeah, exactly. So, freedom of speech. And what if I said we should have a monarchy in this country? What if I did that? Now, my and then everybody would ignore you. <laughs> exactly. But my freedom of speech is meaningless. You know, how is that different from sitting in a closet and saying whatever I want to say? You have that under the Nazis and the Soviets. So what does freedom of speech really mean? If I say that abortion is infanticide and not a woman's right to choose, a woman's right to kill her child, that if I were in a governmental position, I'd be out of a job. How about that? It's true. So where's my freedom of speech? Okay, I don't have that. All right. Freedom of religion. 
You can be whatever religion you want to be. I can, so long as I don't mind violating its precepts. What do you mean? Well, I pay taxes. And through those taxes, I support abortion, I support contraception, and I support an educational system designed to corrupt the souls of the young. So when I pay taxes, because I'm paying taxes to a regime that sanctifies those things, I am violating the precepts of my faith when I do this on a regular basis. More than that, if I were a company, if I were an employer, in some places, I would have to pay for the abortion and contraception of my employees. If I wanted to be in high office in this country, I would have to, like JFK, promise that my religion was meaningless. Yeah, you have a great line about that in your book, Pearson's Empire. Hmm? That I was going to cite, but that's okay. Well, no, go ahead. What I say? I'm always happy. No, to you, you say he renounces. Uh, he renounced his faith. He gave up his freedom of religion. No. That's how you characterize it. He gave sure. up his freedom of religion in order to gain the presidency. A lousy government job. Yeah, that's true. And that's, so there's, there's your freedom of religion. So what are the other two? Freedom from fear. Yeah. Well, I am not worried, it is true, about the government dragging me away. Unless I've been drinking and driving. Mm-hmm. But I do fear about I do fear poor law enforcement. I do fear the collapse of civility. I fear riots. Um, I fear going large portions of the city of my birth and the city here of my longtime residence. Yeah, but you know, I mean, why can't I walk through Compton? You can if you want. The, yeah. <laughs> but not without fear. Well, that's not a constitutional right. Freedom, freedom from, from fear. fear? Yeah. No, the four freedoms, I'm giving you what FDR said. And, okay. the, and the, remember, she didn't say constitutional. She said democratic. And, there are, and I tell you, there are very few people who would not consider FDR one of the greatest enunciators of democratic principles this country has yeah. ever produced. Yeah, but nobody would be able to cite freedom of fear in that. That's too much like old history. For, mo for most people. I can't help it if they don't know nothing. <laughs> it's not my fault. So uh, that brings us to our, our last freedom. Freedom from what? Now that's just too funny for words. I uh, but, you know My little joke is that in our setup, we're taxed as though we were socialists and served yeah. as though we were libertarians. Yeah. So, I don't know, if you want to take, a, if you want to take all my money, then take care of me, cradle, <laughs> cradle to grave. Yeah. But... If you're not going to treat and take care of me cradle to grave, don't take all my money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, mutatis mutandis, it's a little bit like with Obamacare, all right, which now is being repealed and replaced with Trump care. We don't know what it's going to do, but stop thinking about the principle. If I can't afford to pay for health insurance, I'm going to be fined. Wait a minute. If I can't afford the health insurance... How am I supposed to report the, afford the fine? Right. I don't get that. And you know, one of uh, Trump's greatest victories, if he manages to do it, will be eliminating the income tax for people below a certain level. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a brilliant thing if he manages it. And the reason why I say that is that, number one, the government it probably costs the government more money to try to get that money out of those people than the money they're actually going to get. That's true. I heard a ridiculous number uh, several years ago, like 50% of people in America aren't taxed because they're just yeah. too low. So, yeah. But those who don't pay their taxes and don't report their income yeah. are criminals and live in constant fear that they can be nabbed. And once in a while, our, our owners do make examples of some of these guys. Now, imagine, if you will, that... The Trumpster gets what he wants, and everybody who's making less than twenty-five grand a year doesn't have to pay taxes. Well, they weren't paying taxes anyway. Yeah. But they're no longer criminals. They don't have to fear the IRS. They don't have to think about the IRS. 
the IRS themselves will not be spending the money on trying to go after these yeah. things. Yeah, and that's a lot. That's a lot. And, it, and, you know, and you get nothing for it. Yeah. And thirdly, in having done that, there's a good chance that Trump will create a block of pro-Trump voters. Now, isn't that a smart move? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's a smart move if you're Trump. If you don't like Trump, it's a terrible idea. <laughs> but if, if you're Trump or any of his allies, then, you know, the idea... I mean, it's like with FDR. You do what you do to create a block of voters that will never go away. Right. That's what politicians do. Right. Um, so, anyway. So, we've got, we've got the, uh, all the freedoms now. Those are the freedoms. Now, would we have had them without Luther, etc.? And the Reformation, yeah. I'd make the argument we wouldn't need them. How? Okay. Because don't forget, all of the oppressive governments that existed uh, that, uh, against which, shall we say, these so-called democratic freedoms of ours were created were Protestant governments. You remember the big deal about revolting against King George III and all this stuff? Yeah. That was a Protestant. The rebels themselves were Protestants. Um, you may say that all this comes from the idea of private judgment. But the problem with that, that the private judgment was the key to democracy. But the truth of the matter is that nobody really believes in private judgment except for themselves. Luther himself, you know, who was the one who first coined the notion, uh... He said when someone came to him and wanted an explanation for something he pushed, he said, if any papist should ask you why, tell him it is because I, Dr. Martin Luther, would have it so. Okay, wow. That's an argument. And of course, um, when translating the Bible, remember his big thing was that uh, the Bible alone would be the rule of faith. Right. Well, the problem was that salvation comes through faith alone, which was his big shtick is directly contradicted by the Epistle of St. James, which says faith without works is dead. So yeah. how did Dr. Martin Luther deal with it? Get rid of it. He got rid of the whole book. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, no, I think without the, uh, the Reformation, the world would be a happier place. Would it be a freer place? Well, depends on what you mean by freedom. 